it's similar to regular aura. That's the same amount we have a regular aura bed, so that's why I wanted to come in here and do it. We're going to do first, we're going to set up for a total hip. Anterior and or posterior approach. That's what we're going to do first, okay? So, um, generally you use a regular OR bed, unless you have a whole middle invasive, all of a sudden it's a different table, but generally you use a regular OR bed. Nothing really too exciting to worry about, okay? So I know you don't go to the OR, so basically this is the head part, foot part here. They're all going to be automatic, the location going to be raised up, sat down, whatever. How you do it, theme how it works. So patient starts, if you're a regular day in the OR, if you're the patient, you show up to pre-op, a couple hours before your surgery. You check in, nurse checks you in, you get an IV, before you get any medication, they make sure all your consents are signed, that you have a consent that signs says we're gonna operate on you and do X, Y, and Z, right? So what we're gonna do to the patient is the right thing. Doctor will come in, as soon as surgery will eventually write on your leg or your arm their initials to make sure they can do a side sight authorization. The patient, we're operating on your left knee, correct? Yes, everybody says yes, ED, right, or whatever it might be. Then eventually anesthesiologists will come in, talk to the patient about risk and benefit of surgery. They're going to already have this visit done earlier, but they're going to get another one again. We're planning on putting you to sleep, we're planning on giving you a spinal, whatever. Here again, just remind you, here's what can go wrong, blah, 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 here's the procedures. This is how I give some sedatives, some relaxation medicine. Now, now, so your form has been done, the room is clean, you ready to come in the room. If you roll a patient in the room in a gurney, they come in. Most of the people get a spinal. These are old patients, they're not very young. They may not be put to sleep, per se. So they probably get a spinal, most likely. So they either put on their side and get a spinal, or they may be sat up on the side of the bed. This is how it's done most commonly. They're sat on the edge of the bed, and they're kind of bent over the bed like this, okay? So they're like the angry cat position. They're going to kind of hunch their back out, and drop their stern head the thing, and they're going to try to shake it right So spine's on the line, and then put the spine on. Once that's done, they'll put the patient supine, generally. Some of them put them lateral with um, the effective side down, so the spinal can get into the, the, the correct side of the spine. Either the way, it'll be done using another spine. Sometimes, generally, I see you have multi-spine. Now the patient's supine. This is where it all is going to kind of, so now we usually, once the patient's supine, they get a foley in. Once the foley's in, then we kind of take over. We're there with the doctor, we're going to position the patient. And now we're talking about supine versus lateral. So we're doing an anterior approach. It's going to be supine for the most part. Uh, the patient will be in the middle of the bed. Some doctor want, might want a small bump, a towel bump, not a big deal, underneath the hip. So you get a little bit up off the ground. That's all you're going to do. Nothing too exciting for, for an anterior approach. Pretty simple. They're going to set the patient up. They may want the patient a certain layer, you know, level of the bed, further down to the feet, or further to the head. That'd be doctor specific, not really important in this environment we're talking about. Then what happens, the patient's leg will be elevated on a uh, leg holder. I didn't bring it down, it was on a leg holder. We will drape the patient out. We're told that we'll drape the patient out with a, we call a thousand, or a, a sterile U. It's gonna be unsterile, we're gonna, we're gonna open the package. And we're gonna do the, from the groin, straight up the body, towards the nipple, and then right below the buttocks here. Right, we're gonna get that off. It'll be unsterile. When, when, when the nurse preps that, they're gonna prep all the way to that edge. So either below the knee, some doctor like the whole leg, it depends on the doctor. Now we're scrubbing, we're doing what we got to do. In that video, what you've seen was the helmet. So the helmet looks like. So if you were in a tech and you were scrubbing in, sorry, I put a white battery somewhere. A white battery right there. So if you were the tech and you're scrubbing and you do your normal guard, scrubs, uh, hair, hair, hair net, booties, you would then do your, uh, you make sure you have your booties on, your mask on, so the top of your hair net. Just for comfort. You don't want too tight, but you don't want too loose. You don't want to fall around too much. This goes in your back pocket somewhere. Maybe. Is this the hood? This is the hood. Okay. And you're going to plug that in. Other side. Make sure it's plugged in all the way. You hear that noise? Nice. Does that have air? There's no whole air on you, so it cools you off. It's pretty hot, right? Now we're going to show our hands like this. 
normal scrub, whatever we're going to do. If it's the first scrub, we do the first scrub. After the first scrub, then we do the gel, whatever. Scrub, you're going to walk in just like this. Only if you're gloving down on this one here is you're going to go ahead, you're going to get your towel, dry off your arms. Oh, dry off your arms. And get ready to be down, or you're going to put your hood on first. When you put your hood on, what you're going to do is you're going to leave your arms to the side. And if, it's a, if you're taller than the person putting down on you, you're going to bend down or whatever, make yourself height appropriate to the person helping you out. You're going to put it over top of your head. You should keep your arms to the side. You're not moving. You cannot see it sometimes during this per per process. Arms down, you can put the hood on you. Put the hood over, the nurse will come over and adjust it a little bit, then you get your gown on like a regular gown. That's all normal from there. Even though this part is sterile once you have the hood on, we still don't suggest you touch your head a lot. It's out of the vision. So anything above your, your chest, below your waist, you still don't want to touch. It is sterile. It's not the biggest flow in the world to change your your vault, your, your uh, air. I just put on the highest, just to get it done the highest and done it. Um, but it's really not the best to touch your head, okay? Then, then you're going to have, your, you're gonna have the, the hood on, the gown on the top of the hood, so it's all enclosed. Now you're ready to scrub. Now you're, now you're ready to work. That makes sense? Okay. This is what it's going to look like. That's how you're going to do that process. Make sure when you're done, you plug the battery back in the battery, make sure it's, it's charged for the next one. That's the hood, okay? Just going to get an idea how it looks like. Now we have, this is for the super anterior approach. Patient's supine. We're going to go in and we're going to drape the patient. The quick little draping a little bit. Yes, mm -hmm. we're going to go with the draping part of it. Drape it and we do the surgery. Can I see the surgery on the video? So I'm going to talk about surgery itself, talk about positioning. Now, a lot of a little bit different. So that was the anterior approach, supine. So we're going to go back to the beginning, okay? Now we're going to do a lateral position. What are the knees? How many knees? A lot of different ways to do lateral. You could do a bean bag. It's kind of old school. You're not, most of your total joints are not going to use a bean bag if it kind of gets in the way. But most people are going to use some nature, we use called you know, a hip grip, to show you right now. Right next to you in here. It's called a hip grip. Hip grip. There's a hip grip, there's a seat. So hip, hip grip, we need a few different things. We're going to need a perineal part. It goes on this upright. Let's talk about which way it ro rotates in a second. Um. We're not going to test on this, it's more for you as knowledge, okay? So you, know, so you don't think that if you have to know every little piece, okay? But for your knowledge. We're going to try to get our, at least two of the shorter posts with our, um, what call it? I don't know what you would call this, but if it goes in here, it taps the bed. Two shorter ones. Is there an upgrade about when you might be able to get in the surgery locations? So I talked to Dr. Smith yesterday, who is our OR supervisor, OR chief. He said he didn't have, he hasn't seen any issue why you guys couldn't be looking at C90 and that kind of stuff. Now next time I go to the OR and see if there's an issue with the OR. So, you yeah, will. So hip grip come with pads already. And this doesn't have all the pads, but it comes with four pads. One uh, perineal and three of these. And I came with two. This one is okay. This one here obviously goes over top of this. This is something that we were doing before we started. Exactly. This is something we were doing before the patient comes in the room. We're ready to go. You're going to have a few things ready to go. This is one of them. Our covers on our pads. We're going to need a... Can you hand me that blue thing, please? We are going to need a axillary roll. We're going to cover this with either, you just put it like in a um, pillowcase. Uh, the boot, uh, so. This one? Yeah, please. We also need what we call an airplane splint. That's what this is here. It's called an airplane splint. With this, we need something to attach it to the bed with. So, hand those clamps, please. 
you need a clamp. So I put the clamps on when I'm going to be clamping so that I have everything I need. I have them ready to go. Unfortunately, you have to put on the bed before the patient is on the bed because it's in the way. So I do them like this. And usually have them at the bottom of the bed. This clamp is for this. Be somewhere where I'm ready to go. Okay, so again, the patient gets their spinal, then they do supine, defolian, and now we're going to take over. I think we're going to put the patient lateral. I need a participant. Go ahead. Ray loves his stuff. <laughs> so up here on your side, either side, does not make a difference. Right, what hip would you want to be operated on? This one. Okay, so this arm that come out like this. So I, like I said, I don't see in the room, which is kind of weird. You have an arm board. Which is free to be in this room, but it's not here for some odd reason. I should use one right there. Can I see it? There are two, zero, two. Guess numbers. That doesn't work if you push down. Maybe you're not going to break like Mike does. Look at the code. What's <laughs> <laughs> gonna do here, man? Put it on the seat. Need one of these few codes. Eh. Oh, well. that's the arm board. It's not a big deal. You can move this part out. So there'll be an arm board here. Okay. Then what we do is we put the axillary roll in. What generally happens is. Patient, patient now has got an anesthesia on there. We're going to put the patient up. It goes in their axilla. That's what it's called an axillary roll. It's not jammed all the way up in the axilla, but it's in the axillary area. It's to relieve the axillary nerve. So you don't want to jam in the armpit right below it. If you have women, if you have women, you make sure the breast is not pushed underneath the body, okay? So that's that part. Now we're going to do our positioners. This is the perineal area, it's going to go on the very front. Short one's going to go on the back. Maybe another short one on the front or the back. We're going to appear for right now. Great. Give me your scissors, Ray. Set them down over there. So, where the patient on the bed, it kind of depends on where this needs to be. So, we have your side. Sometimes, if they're on the bed, it might be right in the area where we, it's going to be in the problem of where the break of the bed is, but it's going to be fine. Put this on here. So how do you know this is rotated? What you want to do is you want to get the ilic iliac wing and the pubis. So I turn it the other way. So we get to capture both things here. So we bring this over first here. This is not long enough, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this out. And we're gonna turn it around. Nice. Right? Cool. Get that there first, and come to the other side now. Scoot that one a little bit. Perfect. This should be right at the top of their butt crack. Right there, <laughs> the butt crack. What these are going to push this one in first. They're going to push it in, they're going to hold it, push down, tighten it. And then come this side. I push this. I don't push too hard because I don't want to push any junk here. You're gonna push kind of hard like this. Okay. Yep. All right. 
Exactly. Yeah, you and I are girls. Perfect. Can you see for the video? We're going to flex the knees a little bit. Like so. The other dogs are going to do is they're going to go like this. They're going to grab the hip. Is it stable? They may adjust this. If it's not stable, they might want to put another um, uh, one right at the chest. So they don't fall too far forward. Okay? Or posterior, depending on what they want to do. Depends on the doctor. I don't cover on this, but I did not too much blood on there. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm your way here? Uh, I just need a couple of supplies. Yeah, sure. we'll see there. Not here, are you? Uh, we were. Well, I go somewhere else. No, 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 no. I, I'll ask him to see if he can do it. I apologize. I thought you had to close the clinic. No, we have, we're starting to have night clinics. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. All right. All right, I'll, I'll, you're fine. Okay, Keep cool. Going. So now the patient's in, 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 in support here. So if the doctor's happy with the position, they're going to say that's good to go. Okay? Last thing we're going to do is we're going to put the airplane split on. It's going to be on the front side of the patient. This part goes away from the down arm, like so. Trap across here. This is going to capture his arm right here. Like so. Can you have an H-trap? You can put an H-trap like across? Across it, yeah. Gotcha. The patient pretty much set up. It should not be touching their chest. Again, you know what's going to happen at this point? Is we put on the leg holder. Really relax. When you put a leg holder, you're going to be a leg up. You're going to externally rotate the leg. Why do we do that? The internally rotate the leg relax. It's going to collapse. Let it relax. It's going to collapse. So we're going to bring it up. Externally rotate the leg. We're going to hold it. We're going to go on this thing like this. Hold the leg up in the air. And then we're going to put, the, we're going to put a drape here. On the groin. Into the butt crack. Up here. Toward the nipple. So that would be help. Okay. We're just going to prep everything. We come in. We're going to grab the leg. Nurse is going to take the leg lower off. Someone's going to hold the leg. The other people are going to be draping the patient. Sterile. Once we're draped, we're getting ready to do everything. You're going to be standing on this side. Doctor will be on that side. What we're talking about earlier is we're going to flex the hip. We're holding just like this. And we're going to let the leg just kind of slowly internally rotate on its own. As these are the rotators, as they, as they cut those, release those, this leg will come all the way up to here. They'll be dislocated at that point. They're going to flex it forward. When, when, when I do the actual femur part, the leg's going to come down. You okay, pain wise? Yeah. And you're going to use your, your leg to kind of push the femur towards the doctor. So you're going to be holding the leg, and then they can be all like this. You sit on your shoulder, you're going to have one hand like this. Using your leg to push here, you can hold a track like this. Okay? The doctor's right back there, operating. Let's see what you're looking like. And the first part again? That was for the hip? Okay. First was anterior, this is posterior. Okay, yeah. Both hip, this is, a, this is posterior. Okay. So, what's this kind of look, kind of look like? Any questions about that? Appreciate forward. I have you guys come up, I don't get you out of this thing. I mean, this is kind of, you only have to get put in this, I want you guys to kind of mess with it a little bit. Mess with the parts and pieces, put them on the bed. There's a right way and a wrong way to put them on the bed. I want you to kind of put them on the bed and try it out.
Hmm? It throws your arm and leg. <laughs> Don't internally rotate. Exactly. <laughs> and then post off. We'll take the drapes off for the patient supine. Then we will put a abduction pillow. It's a triangular pillar. Pil pillar? Pillow? We're going to feel the legs and get the legs abducted, right? We don't want them to abduct. We don't want to cross our leg. Mm -hmm. Let's be in that for about two or three days. Why? First couple days, you might be on medication. You may not know where you're at or what you're doing. That being said, you might not know what's going on, so we want to keep them abducting or abducting your legs, crossing your legs. So it's for that crossing your arm. Well, just come up here and just kind of put, put these clamps on here. See what it looks like. There's a right way and a wrong way. See that little kind of tooth there? That goes to the bottom. They're going to rail this bed. It fits in the little, the little crevice where the tooth would go. Mm. You do it the other way, it will not go on. You do it the right way. So I want you guys to do that. Kind of put these on, move them around, tighten them down, loosen them up. All that kind of stuff. Until you touch it and do it, you're not going to know what you're doing. Please do all that. Swarm. Swarm attacks.